सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री एंड इन यू एच वी थ्री वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द हायर एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द सेल्फ इन लेक्चर थर्टीन सो वी स्पोक ऑफ द हायर एक्टिविटीज ऑफ कॉन्टेम्पलेशन अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड रियलाइजेशन एंड we although we looked at the nature chart and you know all the orders we are relooking at that because we brought up this issue that when we say understanding we have to understand the entire existence so it seems like huge and it seems an impossible task but then when you um sort of split it up into um orders where you know you you have classified them in a way that those with particular characteristics come together then it becomes easier to understand so therefore we have classified nature into the four orders the physical order the bio order the animal order and the human order so now when we go to understand we have to understand several things if we look at the existence the way we do right now through the gross eyes what we see is something that you know like if you see in the trees they are changing the form a small plant is growing into a bigger plant into a tree the leaves are changing color with the seasons the fruit is being formed in particular seasons the leaves are falling in particular seasons all these changes you keep observing so the form the shape keeps changing similarly the property how it interacts with the other units and how um not necessarily with other units but just um its impact you can say that can also change for instance um you take a fruit the banana now the banana you eat in the morning it has some impact on the health of the body it is considered to be beneficial nurturing for the body same banana you eat at noon now the property is little changed it is not as beneficial same banana you eat at night now it may actually cause damage it may be harmful for the body to have it late at night so the property changes you know like this you will find that the property of many things changes with time so the form and the property which we generally you know speak of and generally think about and generally um, relate to that keeps changing so that is not sufficient to know when we say nine things to know we have to know about those things which are unchanging those things which are continuous those things which are um which are there which are definite so what are those so if we look at you know how we can look at these it is through the higher activities so we can see with the activity of contemplation we can see the relationship or the natural characteristic of the units the relationship the relatedness with one another how they participate in the larger order so this natural characteristic if we study it for the four orders then we know the natural characteristic of all of nature and existence similarly the innateness 
of these four orders with the higher activity of understanding we can actually be able to see the self organization that is there in every unit in existence it's already there i just have to be able to see it and understand it that is the innateness so in every order if i see uh, study the innateness then those are another four things so 4 plus 4 8 and one more is the with the highest activity of the self of realization you can directly see the coexistence the coexistence is the submergence of all the units in space and that is the basis for all these characteristics that we see specific characteristics for the different orders and this organization this energization no how they participate with one another all this the basis for that is this coexistence so that is one more thing to study so total 4 plus 4 plus 1 nine things this is what we said we have to study these nine things in order to study about the existence so this is what we were trying to do and in doing that we were recapping the four orders of nature yesterday so in the assignment we had asked specifically to reflect on these four orders in nature and see how you can be fulfilling for each order or at least not disturb the inherent harmony so if we can take a couple of observations on this then we'll come to the questions regarding anybody would like to share their observations regarding the assignment that we gave yesterday a uh, little observation uh, about yesterday about on four orders when we are going out or uh, for to buy fruits and vegetable so mm -hmm. yeah so i had a good constructive discussion with my wife also sometime i brought one small plastic bag she says nay i will take a cloth bag i will see that i ensure that i don't take a single plastic bag from the uh, vendors i mm -hmm. and the vendor vendor argues that madam these two vegetables will mix she says will do i'll come home and separate it <laughs> so we we will we at the home uh, you know very particular at least we make our little contribution of not to take plastic bags from the uh, fruit walas and sabzi walas yes yeah, so this, this is a small uh, attempt we are working on it and we are yeah. quite successful in doing it very nice so like this there are many small things we can do to be fulfilling for nature from our side of course it doesn't solve the big problem of you know the pollution and the uh, the plastic uh, all the plastic that is causing all this damage to the environment but at least from our side if we start this process perhaps you know the awareness as it grows more and more people will do this until it becomes a system in some countries they have uh, just removed there is no possibility of using such things and see all plastic yeah so you can see that even from our end even though we may think that oh i am so insignificant by myself what can i do there are many small things that we can do always looking at the whole picture so if you see the whole picture and we understand these four orders then how we can be fulfilling for every order we will see that yeah, madam, this, these are the two things. Uh, and another thing is, uh, I have been talking to my students always. Suppose when I finish the lecture, and normally the students have tendency, either they will chit chat, they fight or discuss and then, but then I am continuously counseling them that once you leave the class, please shut out, shut the, all the lights. Mm -hmm. If the electricity is not to be uh, wasted, it, it takes, in 1988, when I first joined teaching, I took students to Koina Dam to generate one unit of electricity. How many turbines are to be run? I know it. And that is what I counsel the students. So they, they are following 
and even uh, now i am we are making attempt to train our housekeeping people also okay you use electricity when it is required but don't waste it when it is not required so yes. that is another small atom uh, thing we are trying to do it and we are little successful in it nice thank you madam nice so like this you'll find that there are so many small things you can do now there is so much revolution no battery operated cars solar um uh, energy being used for so many things so all these possibilities have come up because of increasing awareness of the damage that we are causing to the environment and how we can use the renewable sources of energy in a you know in a more um systematic and functional manner you were saying something Uh, ma'am what i have so regarding this warming no the temperature rise what mm. i have experienced is in my house i um, it was soil uh, outside in the compound and one uh, one day i uh, put paper block that concrete blocks then mm. i uh, could find that it is uh, uh, creating so much heat yes. so that soil is uh it was very cool when it was soil but when it was concreted it um, started uh, radiating so much heat that it was impossible to sit in the house then only i realized that so nowadays everybody is putting paper blocks concreting everywhere so this concrete is giving out so much uh, so much heat and so i put that concrete only in some portion of the uh, house and then compound and the remaining portion i left as soil only Yes. so uh, yes. and then what i did as another point i have noticed is so all uh, pe- people staying um, um, hi- in higher higher altitudes actually what they do is when they concrete their compound all the water they drain it to the drainage mm. so the uh, what happens is uh, this whole water from the whole uh, hill comes down and floods the lower areas so it is impossible for the people staying down down the hill it is impossible because it floods it floods all over so uh, another thing i have made as i have seen that my house is at a higher level so what i have seen that uh, i have seen uh, i have seen that all water that comes into my compound from rain so it settles in the compound itself so it will help the this uh, water level ground water level also recharging also will happen and it will not disturb the people uh, um, uh, staying uh, down in the uh, down part in the down side so nice very nice yeah all these nice. things uh, yeah this will help a lot ma'am this flood is mainly due to see everybody is concreting and every uh, the whole area is filled with houses or co- the compound is um, pay, either uh, put uh, paper block or other concreted so this is yeah. and the, you will notice you will notice that you know the mud will not the water will not run off the mud if you have planted some trees some plants then they yeah. will gather the, the water will get soaked into that so it whole surface is either concrete or tar tar means road road yeah, yeah, so no where that uh, soil is there that that is the main reason the uh, heat and the lower and uh, the uh, ground water level lowering everything uh, everything is due to this only so if we can uh, pay a little attention uh, so to see that our water at least the com- the water that comes to in our compound it settles down in our compound itself other than uh, um, just uh, uh, that is uh, going to the outside uh, drainage then it yeah, will be a very simple thing to do you can just you know make a pit and get all yeah. your water uh, excess yeah. huh. into Actually, that going is into the pit because it is a very high place it will just settle down so the yeah. rain means another thing i have noticed that the rain will not remain um, more than 15 minutes so 15 minutes rain the water will simply get down and then it will go inside uh, soil soil will absorb yeah there and, also i think you know another thing one can do is to plant more trees there yeah plant more yeah. put yeah, more plants and trees absorb, that yeah. can absorb some yes, it will absorb water. more water Hmm. yeah nice yes. very nice namaste didi i was asking about the natural characteristic of human being that bravery didi 
perseverance, I mean, sorry, perseverance and generosity, yes, I am able to get it, Didi. That bravery, I think, only at the time of disaster it requires. Is it so, Didi? Actually, you know, these words are being used in a very specific manner here. Mm. So, we may not be able to understand this uh, until we see the, the significance of what is being said. In Hindi, when you see, the words mm. are dhirta, virta, udarta. For perseverance, bravery or brevity and generosity. But what it is referring to is has to do with your potential for understanding and how you relate to other people. So in, in the case of perseverance or dhirta, mm. what is meant is having this um, determination in you to do justice in all your relationships, human-human relationships with every other person. Justice means how you will do justice in your relationships. You are determined to have trust on intention so that you know, you are not doubting their intention. You see if they lack competence and you try to help build the competence. So you are trying to, or you have decided to help see your participation and help the other in building the competence. And this comes very naturally to us as we start, you know, um, Awakening to the higher activities because that is our true nature. Mm. When it comes to bravery or virta, what is meant is that with that perseverance, with that determination of doing justice, now in your interaction with all others, you do justice in your relationship by using you know whatever tools you have. So if you have better competence, you have understanding. You help them with the understanding. No? You provide them with the understanding. You see that they require, everybody needs to have understanding. So you help them with that. And if you have physical resources, you put in your physical resources also to help them out. No? That is what is meant here by the Virta of bravery. And then if you look at Udarta or generosity, there you are uh, not only seeing the need, you are seeing that whether they ask for it or not, you are dedicating yourself, your body, your uh, wealth, your, you know, every physical facility that you have, your knowledge, you are using all of these, whatever resources you have, to try to help in this process for others, because you realize that even though they may not ask for it, there is a need. Everybody has a need for this. So you work towards that. So this is uh, what the real meaning to these words here is. Now, do you have any questions? Okay, Didi, I got the point. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Didi, just a single doubt, Didi. Between oh. the perseverance and bravery, Didi, so per perseverance to continue, the determination to, to continue, bravery. Yeah, perseverance is to, first you are, you know, within yourself when you get to understanding things. Now you have that determination that now you want to try to help in the understanding for all people. So you will do justice in your relationships. All this mm -hmm. you are getting determined. Mm -hmm. Bravery is when you are actually doing this and using all the, you know, the physical facility that you have, you help in that process, the knowledge that you have, you, know, you are using it actually in your relationships and doing this process actively. And in generosity, you are ready to give everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. but we can't have that bravery against all odds. Something like that we shouldn't have. In, if the people is ignoring, if the people uh, pulled, pulls us down, in spite of that. 
Yeah, I mean, because I can see my relationship with the other, even if the other is not able to see it right now. Mm. I can see what my role is. I can see what the other's need is. So I help out. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I got it. Thank you so much, Didi. That's it from my side. Thanks a lot. In this inheritance, actually in body and in self, so it is human beings and um, together it is education sanskar based actually our bodies um, again um, it is inherited from our parents no mm -hmm. totally mm -hmm. so why this is written commonly body for body and self commonly it is written education sanskar based see when it comes to the body the body of the human being is similar to the animal body, which is similar to the plant body. Isn't it? Okay. So that way we are not doing this again and again. We are not talking about it. But uh, when it comes to the self, particularly you can see the effect of education sanskar. That is significant. That is the one because when I have the education and sanskar, then accordingly, I will do whatever I need to do. No? Body is just a choice that I am making. Body is just a tool I am using as an instrument. So the real significance, the one that is central, the one that is the decision maker, there you can see that education sanskar is what drives, what makes the difference. So there is the focus. Yeah. Ma'am, but see, ma'am, in the bio order and the physical order, it is not mentioned what we are referring to, whether it is self or inheritance. Inheritance in what? Bio see, order. In the bio order and physical order, there is no self. Uh, so yeah, there is no self. So it could be, uh, so it, it is, sim it, uh, oh, the whole four is generalized. So two are for uh, breed based and uh, education sanskar based is for self uh, and uh, wait, 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 wait. for body. Eh? Um, what is the thing? First two, they don't have self, so it, we have to un it is assume that it is uh, body. The last two is. What do you mean assume that it is body? I don't know what the assumption is. It is clear, no? I, what is the question? I didn't get it. No, no, ma'am. Ma this education sanskar is written common for body and self. That is why. No, it's my not answer. written common for body and self. Hmm. See, in the human being, what is really significant is the self. The body is just a tool that is being used. So here, the focus is on the self. So for the self, I mean, you can bring down that education sanskar a little lower where from where yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The that idea is, is that this is basically uh, making all the difference. Once the self has the education, the sanskar, that makes all the difference. The body is just a tool. But it would be way more good if we can separate the inheritance of body and self separately. In body, the what inheritance of body means what? The self, if the self has the right education, the right sanskar does the right kind of activities, chooses a body that is suitable. So where is the question of you know, inheritance for the body? We try to see everything in the physical format. So we look at it as if, you know, because the parents' genes are like this, therefore the, the seed of the, for the you know, embryo is like this. But if you look at the the more the definite picture, the, the one that is continuous in the background, what you don't see is that ultimately it is the self that is choosing this. And it is certain do. criteria and you know. Can do, isn't it? Then it what is, is it? okay. What, what is a it? human being can do. It can do more things if it uh, based on education sanskar. That's not. What? I mean, the body cannot do anything. Nah? The decision maker, the one that is deciding, the one that is actually doing everything. 
that is the self so in the self this is making all the difference it is not the inheritance of the body that makes a difference it is yeah. the uh, inheritance of this education sanskar that is making a difference the body you just choose and it is something physical material but the self is on that continuous journey the self is coming with some sanskars no? again ma'am there is some limitation for the because of the body you know we cannot fly for example even if the self wants to fly uh, we cannot fly there is there are foolish limits. because then i don't understand the, the existence obviously you will make choices based on understanding of the existence in the existential laws depending on the existential laws in line with the existential laws Hmm. certainly you know i can make the right choices based on education and sanskar okay isn't it that's why the understanding is important otherwise we'll do foolish things like that thank you uh, how can uh, we help animals uh, in particular uh, stray dogs hit by a vehicle or by road uh, road accidents and noticed and got injured or uh, died Uh, we know that if injured means um, uh, we have to give a, a proper treatment and try to save its life or otherwise if it died we have to remove from that place um, because we know the consequences of the incident if it is not um, removed that place immediately uh, actually this type of incidents frequently happen in our locality uh, at least once in a month there are uh, many so organizations like blue yes. cross and so many organizations are there Okay. Who, if you call them, they will help you out with such things. Okay, okay, okay. Well, actually, whenever I come across such incident, I couldn't uh, contribute myself. Instead, mm-hmm. myself gets disturbed or disarmony, and then guilt, some guilt throughout the day. So, uh, I just want to your suggestion. Um, how can I help in the in such incident? That's all. Yeah. One is you know the stray dogs. They yeah. can be taken care of by the municipal corporation. the okay. other is there are these uh, ngos private okay. organizations like blue cross and all of these that okay. take care of um, animals when they are sick or wounded or you know okay yes so you can contact some of those and take help from there oh, okay thank you didi i try to get the contact numbers and then do uh, do the thank you thank you thank you so this is just showing you um this you know awakening to the b2 b1 block so that it can guide the lower activities so here you can see if a person has awakened to realization understanding and contemplation the b1 block then that becomes the guide you can see that small red arrow you know leading to the desire the imaging that becomes the guide that sets all my desires right now my desires are for um you know for living with this relationship with this harmony with the coexistence all my desires get set for that and accordingly my thoughts my expectations they come in line with that so this is what this chart is depicting next slide here also there is we are talking about the individual activities so that you know when you are awakening to the activity of contemplation so you realize that every unit has a definite participation in existence no unit is isolated by itself every unit is participating in this entire existence it's doing its role and it has a very definite role to play so this being able to see this being able to see this for every unit in this existence to be able to see that how each unit is um is not only related to every other unit but is participating in that in that larger order in a very definite manner so to see that that is called contemplation so in case of human being what does it mean in the case of human being we keep saying this again and again when you awaken to contemplation now you stop just 
you know going by expectation something good should happen outside this thing should change that should change society should do this government should do that instead of having those kind of complaints you start looking at what is my role in this existence you are trying to see that what is my participation in this larger order larger order means you start with yourself then you see your relationship of the self with the body because the body is also your responsibility then you see in the family in the society in nature and existence so everywhere you are looking at what do i need to do not what should happen outside but what is my role what can i do how can i help what is my value in this existence for example when we talk of relationship of mutual fulfillment with other human beings so am i doing justice in my relationships am i doing what needs to be done for mutual happiness so that there is fulfillment of relationship both sides ultimately if we can see this not just for our immediate family but as we expand our vision as we expand our you know as our understanding grows we see that this pattern of relatedness is there in every unit in this existence and so is it in human beings it's just that we are not aware of it so then i can see that you know i need to be fulfilling for every relationship at least have the right feeling in me for every other human being regardless of whether they are related to me by my immediate family body members you know the related to the body or something like that or my cousins my this my that but something beyond that so ultimately if i can see my relatedness with all human beings what will it lead to it will lead to an undivided society where there is trust there is respect there is affection all the way up to love where you can see your relatedness with every unit in the existence so now you can see what is your role and when i see this as my role in this existence then my desires get set according to that i want to fulfill that role so my desires become very definite and i can see that in nature and existence there is a provision for fulfillment of these very definite desires because that is the design of nature by default that is the way it is so when i see all this when i am able to see that how things are definite how the relatedness is there and what is my role all of this gives me lot of contentment a feeling of satisfaction so this is to do with contemplation activity of contemplation when it comes to understanding awakening to the activity of understanding what is there to understand you see that every unit not only is it having this relatedness with every other unit and it is participating but within itself also it has a very definite pattern things are happening in a very definite manner so you know a plant is growing in a certain manner a uh, uh, a mango tree always gives rise to mangoes and so on you will notice how things are so self organized in every unit that it's happening in a very definite manner we are not doing anything for it that is a part of the self organization that is already there in nature there is a harmony there in all these orders so this innateness this self organization this can be understood for all the orders in nature and when you have this understanding when you see this definiteness when you see this unchanging pattern at the base then it gives you a feeling of bliss you are very you know secure in that and now when you understand this from your side what do you do 
you become determined to live with your own self organization your innateness being in harmony and you help in the harmony of the other units at least you don't disturb their harmony right now what is happening we don't understand many things and therefore we are disturbing the harmony in nature but then when we understand these things then we don't disturb we try to facilitate the harmony in fact if we don't do anything it is already there it is facilitated when we don't understand and we interfere that's when we cause disturbance so at least we should not disturb the harmony ultimately we need to awaken to this activity of realization realization of what realization of the coexistence realization of how things really are what is the reality not what it looked like or what i assumed it to be but something beyond that you know which is definite which is continuous like we said what is this coexistence so you'll find that all of this existence is in the form of coexistence all these units are coexisting with one another and it is in the form of all units being submerged in space so being submerged in space every unit in the nature is energized just being in space you can see that every unit has some energy there you know many things are happening processes are happening so this energy where is it coming from just being in space every unit is energized every unit is self organized there is a definite order like we just spoke of and every unit recognizes its relationship with every other unit and fulfills that relationship in space and that is also happening in a very definite manner in the other orders but we are not if we are not able to understand it then we get confused and we cause problems so what do i need to do so when i see in the case of the self as a unit i can see that i am a unit of consciousness in space i am also energized in space because i have all these activities desire thought expectation that is going on 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 and on and it is continuous in me so somewhere i have this energy that is leading to this i am not doing anything for it i am also self organized in space i am there in a very definite order like we spoke of the fact that whenever i have a feeling that is naturally acceptable to me i feel happy that is very definite in me that is i don't have a role to play in deciding that that is already there what i need to do is to understand that and therefore look at my feeling and look at the natural acceptance refer to it and be in line so i am also self organized and i am already related to all the units in the existence but i may not recognize that relationship i may not understand that relationship so i can also recognize my relationship with other units and fulfill that relationship participate when i do that i feel happy when i don't do that there is some unhappiness in me something unresolved something that disturbs right because i am seeing myself as little bit separate from the others but ultimately that relationship is there it is already there so whenever i am going against that i am getting this little disturbance so now when i am able to see all this when i am able to see the basis for all this then it makes perfect sense so i live accordingly with authenticity and i can do that in continuity once i have that 
understanding, that realization. So the same thing you can see here in this diagram. So when I awaken to the activity of contemplation, I have clarity of relationship of the natural characteristic for all units. And I have clarity of what my role is, what my participation is in the larger order. When I have, you know, when I awaken to the activity of understanding, I have the clarity of the harmony that is there in nature, the self-organization that exists in every unit, the innateness of every unit. I understand that and I have clarity about it. And ultimately, when I awaken to the activity of realization, then I can see this submergence. I can see all the units, including myself, submerged in space. And I can see this entire existence is in this form, in this form of a coexistence. So that gives me that whole basis. And with that, you know, I have the clarity of now how to go about things, what to do. So, once you awaken to the higher activities, like we were saying earlier, now these become the guide for the lower activities. So, earlier we may have been, you know, thinking about, um, say, going by whatever is good for the, whatever is pleasurable for the senses, go for that make choices regarding that. So if the food is tasty, let's eat the food without thinking about whether it nurtures the body or not, and so on. Um, if it feels hot on the skin, let's put the AC. It doesn't matter what the effect on the body is, on the environment is, and so on. So earlier it may have been just that our senses were unguided, but now our senses are guided by this coexistence, harmony and justice. With all of that, now I use my these sense organs in a very um, in a manner where they are fulfilling for all these other units also. And I can see that you know this way I can take care of the body also better. I can understand my role with the existence also. And I can um, my senses can be guided by that. Similarly, when it comes to analyzing, comparing, earlier it may have been that, you know, uh, say I am going for profit, accumulating more and more, and I'm thinking, I'm analyzing, okay, how I can have more, how I can have more, or uh, if it is to do with health, then health of the body, I, can, I may be so obsessed that I'm using a you know, lot of facilities just for my health, doing all sorts of tests and, you know, you know making use of lots of um, physical facility, just being sort of obsessed with health, health of the body not seeing my role, not seeing my participation, but just using more and more of the resources. And same, we already talked of the senses. So now when I awaken to the higher activities, now all this changes. Now my role becomes more decided. My, I can see that the, the senses, they are now guided, like we were speaking of earlier. So I will use the sense organs for the purpose that they are there in line with my natural acceptance. I will not use them just for pleasure because I can see my role, I can see my purpose. Even when it comes to the health of the body, I will see my role in that and I will take care of the body responsibly. So I will do, you know, make sure that I am eating the right things which are nurturing for the body, make sure that I have the right lifestyle which is right for the body, which will keep the body in good health. 
make sure that I am doing whatever is required in terms of exercise, working with the nature, you know, doing whatever it, the postures, yoga, pranayam, whatever is required, using some herbs, so that I can keep the body working well in harmony and at least not disturb the harmony. And because my thoughts are resolved, my feelings are resolved, then the impact on the body is also good. That the impact on the body is that it does not disturb the harmony. It, it facilitates that. So all of this can happen once we awaken to the higher activity of the self. If you see, this is what we were talking about in the steps 5, 6 and 7 of exercise 1. So if we just recap briefly, step 4 of exercise 1, we said what? That I am the decision maker. I am responsible for my feeling. In step 5, we saw that this decision about the feelings that I have for any particular real reality, for example, a human being, this is on the basis of how I understand that reality. Or if I lack the understanding of that reality, whatever assumption I have about it. So, if I have assumed something wrong about that reality, then I make decisions accordingly. But if I have the understanding, then I understand things the way they are and I make the right decisions. But um, till I have that understanding, I also have the natural acceptance within me. All of us do. So I don't have to wait till I get to understanding to start. I can start right now. I can refer to my natural acceptance right now. So whatever assumption I may have about the reality, let me each time refer to the natural acceptance. Because the natural acceptance is rooted to these three higher activities of the self. Your natural acceptance is always for relationship, for harmony, for coexistence. So in step six, we investigated into what is natural acceptable feeling of relationship or opposition harmony disharmony coexistence or struggle we went through this right we saw that these feelings of relationship harmony and coexistence this is what is naturally acceptable because that is how the pattern in nature is i may or may not have understood i may have assumed it to be something different but that is how it is so we are trying to understand this in that 6b so in this, if we are, you know, if you look at the relationship, we are trying to see our relationship with every other unit of the existence, not just other human beings, but every other unit, and try to fulfill that responsibility, our role, our participation, see our role and responsibility in that relationship. That means relationship with every unit. In myself, when I understand harmony, I can see that my innateness is continuous happiness. How I can be in continuous happiness? Whenever I am having that feeling which is not naturally acceptable, I become unhappy. This is part of my innateness. And coexistence means to be able to see that I, the self, am in coexistence in space. I am submerged in space and so is every other unit in nature. This, all this we already did in exercise one, which is just a brief recap. Um, we can go to the next slide. Yeah, so here we are just Recapping that, in step 6a of exercise 1, we said what is naturally acceptable to us. And we found that it is relationship, harmony and coexistence that is naturally acceptable. So it's the same thing that we just discussed, seeing the relationship with other units, 
fulfilling that relationship understanding the harmony right understanding the coexistence and living with that coexistence so in step 7 what we try to do is we were trying to ensure that the feeling that i have at least at that moment that is in line with relationship with harmony and with existence and i will see that when i have this kind of a feeling i am happy so if i can do this at one moment i can do it next moment and next moment and so that possibility i can see of having that happiness in continuity so the major part of this course has to do with these step 6 and 7 <coughs> being able to see what is naturally acceptable to me being able to see that it is my decision i can have i can choose to have the right feeling that choice has been given to me how i make use of that choice is up to me so even though i may not have the understanding that potential is there and if i really want to get to that potential then i have to start paying attention inside start paying attention to the natural acceptance essentially this is just a recap of all those steps uh, ma'am in yes. bio order uh, natural characteristic uh, person uh, that is the one characteristic for that i need one example ma'am i want to understand about that yeah huh? so if you see like for instance a plant Mm-hmm. No? spinach or something now how it relates to say the human body you know mm-hmm. so you will find that plants in a very definite manner it will either nurture the body or it will worsen the body you no know? it will either nurture it or be harmful for it that is one way to look at it yeah so like spinach will be nurturing for the body if you see a poisonous plant even if you mm-hmm. assume that it is good for the body or whatever it is very definite that it will cause harm to the body and in this case you will see in every case like for instance this plant you know spinach that you eat now the spinach when you eat that itself gets worsened you can say or it deteriorates and it is useful for nurturing the body so that process goes hand in hand one unit is getting you know dissolved is destroyed almost you can say worsened and at the same time it is nurturing the other that relationship is there does that help Sandhikala ji yeah ma'am yeah okay thank you thank you i understand okay um um today we'll just reflect on these higher activities within us and see how we can be fulfilling for other human beings for other um units in nature and how we can keep making that attempt to um awaken to our higher activities because ultimately that's where we can see things as they are so to do that we have to keep referring to our natural acceptance we have to keep paying attention inside so our focus will be on that today and um i'll give a um assignment in the group also